Hi, my name is Tom. Today I'd like to talk about the piers and the footings that I poured for this new deck in my backyard. So the first thing you're going to want to know is how much did it cost and how long did it take? Well, the whole thing cost about $815. That's the concrete and the formwork and the rebar. And it took me about two days to actually pour these with some help. So let's talk about the digging part for a minute. It took me about one day to dig each one of the holes I dug. Each hole was two feet square by 48 inches deep. To do that, I used basically three tools. I used a shovel to dig the dirt out of it. I used a straight spade to actually create the sides. This dirt allowed me to create really pretty straight sides. And then I also used a post hole digger to take some of the dirt out. I did try at one point a power auger, um, and that was effective to help loosen the dirt, um, but it actually was not as useful as just digging. So it took me one day to dig each hole, and then when I was done, I moved on to the next one. So let's talk a little bit about the tools I used to pour the concrete. First, I had a mixer, a concrete mixer that I got from a local rental spot. I also had an edging tool to edge the top. I had a few trowels to trowel the top surfaces. I also had a wheelbarrow, a steel wheelbarrow, so that I could move the concrete around. I had a five gallon bucket that I used for measuring the water that I poured into the mixer with the concrete. And I also had a mat knife to be able to cut open the concrete bags. I also had access to water, which is what I used to sort of fill the bucket so that I could add the right amount of water to the concrete. So here's my concrete setup. I've got the mixer set up on top of a tarp and I've got a two by four that's keeping the wheels from rolling in. Here's my rebar structure. Take a look in the hole. The number five rebar at the bottom with the number four rebar coming out the top. When I'm done pouring the footings, I'll build the formwork and I'll set the formwork for the piers on top of the footings. So let's talk a little bit about the water mix for your concrete. So what I want to do is I want to get as close to the manufactured recommended amount of water as possible. So what I've done is I've taken a nearly clear bucket and I've marked the two quart increment several places around the edge that I can see through uh, when I'm putting the water in. So I start, as you'll see, by putting water in, and then I pour in half a bucket, uh, half a bag of concrete. I let that mix, uh, and then I pour the next bag in, and that makes it start to be stiff, so I add the next amount of water for the next bag. So I'm always putting the water in uh, for the bag before I put the bag of concrete in. At the very end, in this case after three bags, I will then add a little bit more water to get the consistency I want and just to make sure uh, that everything is moving around in the mixer properly. Um, if you just try to do it by eye, I think you're gonna probably have too much water in the mix. Uh, that's the most common problem with concrete. And um, you're gonna end up having uh, concrete that'll crack in the later, later times. So that's how I do it. Another tip is to dump the concrete bags directly into the mixer instead of trying to shovel it in. I like to work with 60 pound bags of concrete one at a time. To make it easy to work with, I start by putting a dash line in the top with my mat knife and that's where it'll break. Then I turn it over and I use the mat knife to cut the bottom of the bag. From there, I grab it in the middle and it breaks in the center. Now I have two 30 pound bags ready to dump into the mixer. A good way to make sure you're getting the right mix is asking yourself, can I see the back of the mixer at all times? If it starts to sick back there, you either need to add a little water or you need to get in there with a trowel and break it apart to get the dry stuff to mix in. An important tip I learned the hard way is always leave your concrete mixer on. Only turn it off briefly when you're pouring the concrete into the hole. I turned mine off after the last pour of the day once and I spent a good two hours chiseling out the hardened concrete when I finally got back to cleaning the machine. When the concrete mix has the right look, it's time to start pouring it into the holes or your formwork. Here I've actually staked a 2x4 into the ground to prevent the mixer from falling into the hole. And I'm just going to dump it in and then turn the machine right back on. I add a bit of water to prevent the remaining concrete inside the mixer from sticking. 
Then it's time to do a bit of cleanup for the stuff that didn't make it into the hole, and then start tamping. So this is what it looks like when it's done. I've just finished tamping it with this sort of make diff shift tamper. It's pretty flat at the bottom and it's pretty, uh, pretty clean. So now over the course of the next few days, I will be spraying it about once every couple of hours so that it cures properly. And we're ready to go on to the column portion of the deck. For the columns, I created custom square forms, which I'll talk about in another video. This way I could come back later and add a brick face to the columns. After dropping the forms on top of the footings, I added the 2x4s on either side, which are staked into the ground to prevent the forms from moving while I pour. The concrete pouring process is the same as the footings. I used a 5-gallon bucket to fill the forms with concrete instead of trying to dump the concrete directly from the mixer. I took the formwork off after 48 hours, at which point I started spraying the piers about twice a day, and after three or four days, I was ready to backfill. So before we go, let's talk a little bit about how to make sure that your mixer is clean so you can take it back to the rental agency. So the first tip is never shut it off. From the time you start pouring concrete to the time you're absolutely sure it's clean, do not shut it off. Put water in it, let the water swish it. Um, right now, after my last pour, I've had water in it and it's swishing around. I've gone back in with my little trowel, broken off the the concrete at the edge. The water and the sand will help sort of abrade the inside um, and that's going to help keep it clean. So now that the mixer's clean, what do I do with the slurry? Well, I put a tarp on the yard. I'm going to dump the slurry into the tarp and then after it dries, I'm just going to take that tarp and put it into the standard garbage can. Uh, that way I can get rid of the stuff without having to rent anything and I can take the mixer back to the rental space. Hope this helped. If you like it, please subscribe. Thanks very much and we'll see you soon.